Hi everyone, it's been a long time. Uh, I didn't feel that I had enough content for a 10 minute video, but some things have happened recently. Not only is there a brand new VR Chat SDK update with audio fixes and a bunch of other really cool stuff, now you can use Blender 2.8, and I do recommend that you switch over to it. It is not only faster, but generally more stable, and this is what everyone is going to be using in the future, and I assume that's also going to be where the focus will be for the developers of Cat's Blender plugin and for Material Combiner. If you follow my other two tutorials and you've had success so far, hopefully I can show you to go even further beyond and you can customize your models so that you don't look like everyone else and really that is the goal here, right? So let's take a look at first Blender 2.8. Things are pretty much the same. One of the things you're going to want to do right away though is probably go to preferences and if you're used to the controls of Blender previously, you're going to want to go to interface, check through here and make sure things are um, similar and the color the colors are similar to what you'd like the default theme the new default theme is quite nice also um, Input and navigation can be uh, edited for to your own preferences now um, I do recommend the turntable orbit method uh, auto perspective as well and um, a few other things that are in here that are kind of uh, uh, standard for people who are used to Blender 2.79. You might want to use right-click. Um, I actually got used to left-click in other software, but then I became used to right-click in Blender 2.7. So, I mean, your mileage may vary. Um, I do recommend, of course, though, switching spacebar action to search, because this will allow you to search for things that I'm going to show you later that make it a lot easier. You don't have to necessarily remember all of the ridiculous number of hotkeys that Blender has. It's great if you do, but you don't necessarily have to, because the search function will let you type in exactly what you're looking for, and it will usually answer um, and give you the tool that you that you need. So this one is main. Uh, secondly, you also want to go into the add-on section and grab anything you might need as well. Of the You'll find that it's a little bit different now. Under edit, you'll find in preferences, that's where you'll find your add-on section. So you're going to want to go over to Cat's Blender plugin. Let's just pull up some uh, windows here so I can demonstrate a few things. So you're going to want to go to Blender.org and get the latest version of Blender 2.8 if you don't have it installed through Steam. I do actually recommend uninstalling it from Steam and installing this version because then it's installed in your windows and the app data directories will all work correctly without errors. I've seen a few people have problems with add-ons inside Blender because of the Steam installation and some of the folders change. So I do recommend doing it this way and you'll have less problems. Um, again, go to Cat's Blender plugin. Dot com and download the latest version from the GitHub. You're going to need the development version this time, and inside that, you're going to find that there is a material combiner add-on section. Now, Blender 2.8 has a lot of UI changes. One of the things you're going to see is over here in this right-hand section is going to be where the tool menus are hiding. So in this area over here, that's where those sections are, and you're going to find cats in there. Down in this area under optimization, you're going to find atlasing, and the atlas generator and, atlas and material combiner is going to be in this area, and you're not going to see what, you, what I see here. You're going to see um, some installation tools. Um, the current version right now is version 14. Thanks, Hotox, and good luck on your exams. So the first thing I want to show you is over at booth.pm, a new version of 2A-7 has been released. Now this is a model that you'll find on the standard avatars row inside VRChat. This is a CCBY 4.0 Creative Commons license model, meaning you can do whatever the heck you want to it. And this model is free to use either commercially or non-commercially in VRChat. It is optimized for VRChat, and this model is really small. You can get it down to be excellent or good on Oculus Quest, and it also looks fantastic. There's a bunch of new models that are in here as well, and um, they come with a bunch of different parts that you can mix and match to make some customization. Now, if you can't read Moon Rune, you might want to change what's on the shirt here, uh, and that's pretty easy to do. So my first tutorial is going to be how to do something like that. One of the biggest requests that I've received over the last couple of months is how to do your own materials, how to do a UV map. Now, there's many ways and many tutorials out there that... We'll show you how to do a UV map in many different ways for things like like uh, buildings and, uh, and, and inanimate objects. But doing character UV maps is a little bit trickier. And most people just want to be able to draw 
on their character or draw on a texture and they want it to look fairly 2D so that they can get what they want out of it. Now I recommend going and downloading because we're all about open source software here, Krita. Krita will give you probably the best Photoshop-like experience when you don't have a license for Photoshop, when you don't have Clip Studio Paint. I highly recommend this software. It's absolutely fantastic for editing textures and it, it will do a great job for you. So just like before, we're going to go to go into cats and we're going to click fix model. One of the problems with this particular model from Booth is that it doesn't come with a texture. But at the same time, it actually does come with a texture. The difference is that the texture is saved in a PSD file and you have to apply it yourself. So what we're going to do instead is fire up Krita and find that PSD file. You'll see here that there's a bunch of textures that come along with this model and to get it working properly, simply all you have to do is save this as a PNG. We're also going to include the alpha channel for transparency. Now one other thing you have to note is that on Quest you can't actually do transparency or double sided textures. So we're going to go ahead and open the rest of them as well. So we have the body, we're going to grab the armor too. And we're going to save this file again as a PS or PNG. Etc. is other parts of the model that you'll need. And essentially we're just going to go through all of them and save our PNG files. That's okay for now. So let's go back to our model. So you'll notice now that the body has no materials, but it does actually. So we're going to look through here and you'll notice texture, etc. Hair, armor. It's obvious what these things are. So let's start with body. Now if you look down here in Blender 2.8, you'll see that there is a materials option. Texture, body, and if we scroll down a little bit, you, there's a few things we can do. The easiest thing to do here is actually to use the MMD texture option that comes with MMD tools. And so it's quite simple to just choose the texture from here. So let's go add, add, and find our body texture. Now there are ways to pull this out of the model itself, but I find this to be the easiest way. And then you already have your file for editing. So we're going to go body and pull this in and you'll notice some things have happened. Now, as you can see here, there's a lot of different parts going on in this model. The reason why they do this on this particular model is so that you can do your own customization, which is super nice. Now, you'll notice it's just one mesh. Now, this is looking pretty fantastic, but there's a lot of things going on here. So we need to separate this. So what we actually want to do is separate first by shapes. The reason why we do that is to prevent any visemes and blend shapes for facial movement and eyes from being affected by our edits. So we're going to go here and find our body and we're going to unclick it to hide it. So this hides all the facial bits that if you modify them would get blown out by our modifications. So we want to work with body no shapes. What we're going to do is we're going to take this mesh here and we're going to separate by loose parts. All right, so if you've been following along up until this point, you've probably got a model with some parts on it. So that's one of the things that can happen when you're doing UV mapping and one of the things that can happen when you're trying to uh, get a model to work. This one does have a few issues uh, that are different from your regular models. Most of the time when you import them into CATS and click Fix Model, they'll simply have materials. But this is just one way, um, one of the things that you can do to, uh, to get that working. So if you were following along here, I clicked on um, the... Cat's Blender plugin, and what we did is we selected the mesh to separate by first shapes, and then we disabled the shapes one. Then we clicked on the second one and clicked loose parts to separate all of the different parts of this model. Now you could also do it by materials, which works okay too, but this particular model shares a lot of materials. Now when you combine materials with com material combiner, oftentimes you want to customize those as well, and maybe they're not laid out in a way that makes it easy to do so. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to show you how to take something like a skirt or a shirt and rapidly replace what's there using a method that I prefer. Um, there's lots of ways to do this, but it's this is one of the ways to do this. Now, I do recommend going into an ortholinear view by clicking up in this little ball here. And then as you move around, you'll see that there's a lot of flat sections. Now, there is a really cool little technique called project from view. Now, if you click on something like this, you'll notice it's the whole front of the model. Now I probably wouldn't want the hands, for example, um, but maybe I just want to change the texture on something flat. Let's say like maybe this hat. So I'm going to take this hat and we're going to actually just move it um, out of the way here. 
and we're going to use this as an example of how to retexture something. So we've got a hat here, and maybe you want to have your own stuff on it. But So what you do is you tab into edit mode, you do a select all, and what you'll see down here is the texture that's associated with that. And as you can see, it's associated with a lot of other stuff in this model as well. So down here on the bottom right, you actually want to select the x-ray. This lets you collect, select everything inside. So we're going to press A again to deselect everything and I'm going to go back into this section and once again I'm going to select just what I want here. So we want just the front. So you can either do that by selecting just the part you want or you can select all and then deselect the things that you don't want. So a bit like that. Now I don't want some of this and sometimes an easier way to deselect things that are in here are to press C to go into the uh, circle select tool um, and you might want to do that on faces so if we press C here I can middle click using the circle select tool to deselect the things I do not want to affect as part of this now the only downside of the circle select tool is that when you're in it you can't um, move your viewport dolly around so maybe we want uh, this area here and I just want to change this and maybe I want to put my name or something on it so what you can do now is you can go into your front view and this makes it really easy to paint on these sections. Um, so maybe I don't want this as well. I'm going to just pull some of this out again. Just want to clean this up a little bit. And I just want to paint on this. I could leave the rest of it alone. Or I can select the inverse in a moment and UV map that as well. So what you're going to do is you're going to press U on your keyboard. And you're going to select Project From View. Now down here in our new material that we made or new texture that we made you'll see that this is actually just that front part so I've remapped already the UV for this particular object and you can do this with everything so you can transform this pretty easily the G key allows you to move it around the screen and as you can see what's underneath is being transformed here to wherever on the original image that you happen to be selecting I believe this one is etc and as we move it around here you'll see that the different parts of the mesh have changed now I can press S to scale just like you can with vertices and I can drag this around and remap things on the model now it is a bit of a complicated subject but it does allow you to do things like rotate so if I wanted for example the front of these parts that I selected to be here I could just take this mesh and re-edit it now if you recall most of what was here was everything down here now what I can do is I can go select invert and then you can see the parts that are selected here if I press a I can select them as well and you see this is the part that I cut out so now I can remap that if I want to so you can either paint directly in the existing mapping but if you prefer you can use project from view to get the front of something this is incredibly useful for things like t-shirts and other stuff where you just want to paste a new new picture right on top of it it's a great way to do that um, again inside um, UV editor you can also go to texture paint and uh, paint directly on them as well so I have the ability to paint directly onto it so let's say I wanted to change this front bit here um, I can just do that like this now you could use Krita as well now you'll notice depending on how you've set it up this is obviously inverted so again you can move that mesh pit so if we go out of here back into UV editor I can go to this area here select all so you notice I'm, I'm in this opposite section here select inversion and here's this bit here so I could take this and I could rotate it this way so it is quite easy to remap things within within blender now this stays as part of the mesh it's data stored inside the model so where that UV map changes to is actually going to change what the uh, what where those those pieces of uh, material are mapped and that also will change obviously anything that's underneath it so if we look at the entire UV map just the part that I haven't selected you'll see that it's all here if I was selecting everything else within the model or other meshes that were in here you'd see them as well so the other thing you can do is you can simply strip an entire model of its materials so so if I go down to this part of the model, I can tab out of edit mode, and if I go here and remove, you'll see that it no longer has a material assigned to it. Now you can create a new material just by going to the right hand side here and clicking new, and it allows you to then use a new image if you'd want. So we can go to the image editor section, I can click new, um, I can say hat, hit OK, and then I can assign the hat material or hat image with the hat material so for example here I'd have to go to image save as hat.png 
and then I could go in here and I could add my um, texture to it. And you'll see it's just this shiny black surface. Now this is going to be a little bit hard for me to edit, so we probably want to make a two-part material map. Now imagine along with me here if this was a person or some other model that you happen to be editing, a weapon, something like that. Let's say you wanted to retexture it. So it's good to take the parts that are important to you and put those as flat surfaces that make it easy to paint on. And then you can also take the... Uh, you can also take the other parts that may have a more general texture and separate them out. So let's tab into edit mode here and you'll see that this is the UV map that was created based on the previous setup of this particular hat. We don't like that, so let's let's go ahead and change it. So we're going to take our front view here like this. I'm going to deselect everything. We're going to go into the circle tool and I'm just going to select the front of the hat. I'm going to turn off uh, x-ray mode for now. It makes it easier for me to just select the surface on the front. Go do that, go do that like this. I'm going to deselect some of this stuff I accidentally selected. So I just want to have this part of the hat. So it's something that I can edit on my own. Um, and now we're going to press U and then project from view. So now I've got my front of the hat here. Pretty easy. I can use the G key to move it around and the S key to scale it up. This actually changes the resolution of that part. So if this part of the mesh is very large, then I can have a much higher resolution texture on it. This can really enhance the way your models look and you can do full customization this way. So this front part of the hat can have a high resolution image on it. Maybe it's my own logo, maybe it's my Twitch channel, whatever you want it to be. And then you can do a select inverse, for example, or you could do this multiple times. I can take another section, for example, example um, and even just select the inside here and deselect these parts like this and I could take the inside of the hat and press like let's say for example let's go to the Z view so that we're underneath and I could take this and press U and project from view. So now I have the inside of the hat that I can separately edit. This does not become part of that other part. I don't need it to be as high resolution, so I can just set it over here. You can do this for the bottom of the hands, the top of the hands, the front of the shirt, the back of the shirt, um, anything you'd like to edit. So you just take your separate mesh, you uh, go down here into texture view mode and or UV editing mode. You select the vertices that you want to be part of that UV map. You press U and project from view, and they give you this nice flat surface, which makes it really easy to paint directly on and then you simply paint on your PNG texture file and assign that to the material. Now you'll see that there's a lot th down here that's selected. Now it's a little tough to see with a black image on the background so there's one other thing you can do and you can do a uh, shared location so over here, UV sync selection allows you to sync what you have selected in the 3D view with the UV view. Now this is really useful because you can, again, you can go into this section and you can select just parts of it and have that, that model selected there. Or you can take, again, this image into Krita, edit it directly, paste some other layers onto it, whatever you'd like to do. But either way, that's how you create and edit and modify a UV map. And I hope, I know this meandered a little bit, but I hope this video is clear so that you can understand how to do that.